Well, schools across our state are preparing for budget cuts due to the coronavirus. Yeah, so Governor Whitmer is expected to release her roadmap tomorrow, but this morning we are joined by Brian Davis, Superintendent of Holland Public Schools. Good morning to you. Good morning. Thank you for having me. Hey, Brian, let's first start with obviously tomorrow with the, the deadline for the budgets to be due. Uh, where does your school district stand as far as preparing a budget to submit to the state? Sure. As uh, we're required by state statute, our Board of Education approved their budget for the next fiscal year at a regular meeting mid-June. And unfortunately, that budget is based upon several unknown factors for this coming year. Uh, namely, we don't know what the end of our current 1920 budget year is going to look like, and we have yet to receive any official information about what's going to be done for the 2021 school year. So certainly a combination of factors of not having information uh, from our state legislators uh, and Department of Treasury, the inability to really assess what our costs are going to be next school year, not yet knowing what the requirements are going to be to return to school in person, all those factors combine to some real uncertainty. Yeah, and I know it may be hard to answer too, but what are some of the you know impacts that a district like Holland could see? Sure, so when we first began this budgeting process, we were told that we could expect to receive up to a 25% reduction in state aid funding. Uh, we certainly know the relationship between COVID-19 and the impact of the economy and children being in school so that parents can work. And so the impact has resulted in significant reductions in the school aid fund, about $1.3 billion. That translates to Holland to about $685 per pupil. So we're looking at everything from class sizes to transportation to any kind of uh, separate support services for students, but mainly vendor contracts outside of our district. We want to reduce the impact on our classrooms as much as possible, but I think as schools not only across Michigan, but across our country, look to our federal government for additional financial support during this time, uh, parents could expect to see some pretty significant impacts to their overall programs in their local schools. Brian, I know that you're obviously trying to, you know, get away from the, you know, having to cut staff, especially teachers in the classrooms because they are so important to the children's education. Uh, you'd mentioned possibly other programs. Are you looking at possibly athletics, extracurricular stuff? What, what kind of things might have to go to the wayside? Sure, certainly um, everything is, is being considered right now. We'd like to do as many things as we can through attrition and retirements. Uh, we've tried to get ahead of this as much as possible. I launched a business as unusual plan back in April uh, to be able to look at different areas related to not only our budget, but the increased services of cleaning and also online remote instruction that might need to take place. So nearly 100 community members are working across the board to study the issues and to try to make those recommendations. Um, right now, we're utilizing all of our enhancement dollars that we have here in Ottawa uh, County to be able to help fill our budget go uh, gap. We're also liquidating all of our building and site fund assets, uh, assets from funds that we have sold buildings in the past. So we're trying to utilize every single resource we can to preserve those supports that are so critical for kids. And especially since we've been out of school for several months now, those extracurricular activities, our relationships are built and developed across our school community and we want to preserve those if we can as well. Yeah, absolutely. All right, well, thank you so much for all this uh, useful information. We'll certainly be listening very closely tomorrow.